Dr. Brian Feely, if you do a good job today, maybe a million dollars for you, too. I'll take it, man. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> so hold this time was for, easy. Time for clear to play. We're going to take you inside the tent, get you updated on the latest injuries in the Bay. Proud to partner with UCSF Health on this segment and bring in professor and chief of sports medicine at UCSF, Dr. Brian Feely. Doc, there's not a whole lot. This is great. There's not a huge Bay Area list, uh, but there are some interesting things out there. And, and, and for instance... I was convinced, based on every doctor I listened to, there's no way Josh Allen is playing through that UCL injury. Man, he played, and he played the game of the year. I know he turned the ball over three times. They lost. What was your reaction to what he did? Yeah, I think when we think about UCL injuries and you know the proverbial Tommy John injury, it's very different in football players than in baseball players. So in football players, it tends to be a lower-level sprain. In fact, Josh Allen had a UCL sprain in 2018. He was able to come back from it. Um, it tends to be a contact injury, so it's less you pitched through a elbow that's kind of degenerating and then popped your UCL. This is more usually a contact injury where you sprain things, and if you look at his injury mechanism, he was throwing, he got hit. It isn't like he can't necessarily throw after that. And the reality is, is that Surgery for these, for football players, is really rare, especially in quarterbacks. And it, you have to look back at Jake Delhomme and Carson Palmer were the last two quarterbacks that actually needed surgery for this. So even though it sounded like, gosh, it's a UCL injury, he's on his way to Tommy John, um, most of the evidence suggests that he's probably going to be able to keep playing, hopefully th- throw a few less picks and have a, a fewer goal line fumbles. Yeah, I mean, you can hope, and I, I don't think you can blame the UCL for the dropsies at his own goal line. But functionality-wise, is it being able to put pace on the throws? Is that where he'll most likely be affected? Yeah, I think pace and a little bit of accuracy. You don't put nearly the same amount of torque on your elbow um, as a as a quarterback compared to a pitcher, but you're not going to be probably quite as accurate. You may not be able to get things into the scenes that we know he's able to do. Um, he's still going to be able to run. He's still going to be a great, effective runner. I doubt you can tell somebody like Josh Allen, hey, we're worried about your elbow, so stop running the football. So I don't think you're going to see a huge drop-off in his performance. Um, I would, All things considered, I'd much rather a quarterback that I was cheering for have an elbow injury like this than a thumb injury where you just can't grip the ball. Dr. Brian Feely. Dr. Pandy will be back next week. Dr. Brian Feely cleared to play today here 95-7, the game on Willard and Dibs. Okay, Doc, Kyler Murray, we just got word about an hour ago that there's still very much a question mark for him on Monday night. When you're dealing with a hamstring injury and you use your legs as much as Kyler does, what are we looking at in terms of his return to play? Yeah, To be honest, I'd be surprised if he comes back um, this week, and if he does, I'm not sure how effective he is with his legs. I think a couple things with hit, with hamstring injuries is we you know we talk about hamstring injuries a lot in the NFL, but they tend to be something that takes players out for four to six weeks. I think you combine that with playing at altitude and his general running style, and the fact that Colt McCoy is three and one as his backup, I'd be kind of surprised if we see him play this week. Eric Armstead had a chance to play last week, didn't, and now he's got a chance to go again with the plantar fasciitis and the ankle issues. How difficult is it to return from the myriad foot injuries that he has? Yeah, I think it's really tough, and I think one of the things that we forget is when an athlete has one injury, that second injury is exponentially harder. And if you look at Armstead's history, it's kind of it's a little bit sad on Google. If you look up Eric Armstead injury, it goes into is Eric Armstead even playing anymore as one of the other searches? And I don't think that's fair. You know, he has two separate injuries. That stress fracture is probably on its way to healing. But plantar fasciitis, if you've ever had it, it can be the kind of thing that comes and goes almost on a day-to-day basis. If, if it's flaring up, you can't put a step down without pain. I don't see how he plays through that. Now, that being said, he's had a lot of rest. So hopefully that's given his body enough time to recover. And I think being conservative when he's had multiple lower extremity injuries is the right way to go. Uh, Doc, the uh, 49ers and Cardinals will be playing at very high altitude uh, on Monday night. We know the Niners are in Colorado Springs preparing for that. But uh, what are they looking at? And, and, you know, what, what kind of a challenge is this, if you will? 
Yeah, I think it's it's definitely a challenge to play at altitude. How much of that is mental versus physical is up for debate. Um, I was hoping you would ask this because I think we know for endurance athletes, it is a big deal. Like if you're going to go do a one month cycling adventure up in up at altitude, you need to prepare by being in altitude. There really isn't that much evidence that you're going to perform any differently for athletes for you know essentially sprint athletes. But you're going to feel more out of breath. You're going to feel more tired. And depending on your so-called mental fortitude to understand you're going to be okay, you're just going to be a little bit short of breath, I think it makes all the sense in the world to prepare yourself by feeling that differently at Colorado Springs. But I don't think your performance actually suffers. Doc, great stuff. We appreciate you hopping in today. All right. Take care, guys. Okay, you too. There it is. Dr. Brian Feely, the proceeding was sponsored by UCSF Health.